Hi everyone, I'm Marco Dorini and I'm working in the Distributed Computing and Storage Department of GAR. And today I show you the work that uh, I have done with my colleagues, Alex Barchesi and Matteo Di Fazio. The work is about a declarative chain to multi-Kubernetes cluster for automation of the multi-region high availability for the workloads. We can start with a um, brief introduction of the GAR cloud architecture. It's composed to several layers. We have a physical layer in which we have installed the mask tool to configuring the hardware of the cloud. After we have an operating system and virtualization layers. On this, we use the um, Juju tools to deploy the OpenStack inside the application layers. We use the OpenStack to provide YAS services for the GAR cloud users. Um, in the last year, we want to create a Kubernetes cluster on OpenStack. And for this, we have created um, Juju bundles that uh, we have published in the Juju store that uh, allow to create an easy and in fast way and Kubernetes cluster. So in this way, we have the possibility to create a multi-Kubernetes cluster in different regions of the GAR cloud. And this representing the declarative part of the project. So the Kubernetes ensures the eigenvalibility inside that single cluster for application and services. But we want to uh, ensure the same eigenvalibility outside a single Kubernetes cluster. And for this, we ask ourselves, can we have an infrastructure that also frees the user of the multi-region HA. And we find the answer in KubeFed and the external DNS. The KubeFed, um, the completed name of the KubeFed is the Kubernetes Cluster Federation. In fact, when uh, we talk about a chain of Kubernetes cluster, we talk about uh, to the Federation. And in this presentation, I show you what is KubeFed and how did it work? And uh, after I show you the external DNS and how it works with the KubeFed. So a KubeFed is a tool that allows to coordinate and configuration a multiple Kubernetes cluster from a single set of DPI. And it provides a mechanism for managing a multi-region application to ensure a um, disaster recovery system. The KubePad is composed to control plane, server side, and um, KubePad CTL, client side. The control plane, it's a core, and it's the manager of the federation. It's a, a tool to coordinate all cl Kubernetes cluster in the federation. And the KubePad CTL is a client similar to KubeCTL, but it's used to configuring the control plane. In the KubeFed, we have two actual, the host cluster and the member cluster. The host cluster have the managing role inside the federation. In this cluster, we can install and configuring the control plane. And for single federation, we have a one host cluster. The member cluster is the clusters with the uh, executive role. In fact, when we deploy a resource, uh, the resource is, is uh, instanced in the member cluster. And we can have uh, many member clusters created also in, two, in different uh, region of the cloud. But how the host cluster can be managing the member cluster? Through an important mechanism in the KubeFed, the propagation. To create a federation, it's necessary that the, in the control plane are injected the config file of the member cluster. In this way, the control plane have um, the possibility to know who is the member in the federation and how it can access to them. To start the propagation mechanism, it's necessary that the user defined um, federated resources in the cluster host. 
Uh, in this way, the control plane create an object that describe and representing these federated resources. And after the control plane propagate this information inside the member cluster, and it can create an, uh, an instance of this resource in the member cluster. For example, it creates a deployment, a service, a namespace, and so on. Uh, in the, the federated resource is composed to three important components, the template, the placement, and the overrides. The templates is uh, the classic definition of the Kubernetes resources. In the placement, we can add a list or set of the member cluster in which we want to create the resource. And the overrides, that is an optional field, it's a representing a set of the change that uh, we want to apply in, for the resource in the specific member cluster. This is a general schema of unfederated resources. In the kind, we can define the type of the federated resource. And for example, we can have a federated namespace, federated deployment, and federated services, and so on. After we define the name of the resource, the namespace in which we want to create the federated resource inside the member cluster. And after, we define the three components, template, placement, and overrides. This is a simple example of a federated deployment that we have used to test the Kubernetes. You can see that in the template, we add the configuration, the definition of a uh, classic deployment in the Kubernetes. Uh, inside, we have uh, uh, defined the number of the replicas that we want for this deployment, and uh, uh, we define a specific uh, Docker image that we want to use for this deployment, and so on. In the placement, we add the list of the member cluster in which we want to create this resource. For example, in member cluster 1 and in the, the member cluster 2. And in the overrides, we have a change for this deployment for the member cluster two. In this case, we want to add a replica to the member cluster two. In fact, when these uh, federated deployments are created, we uh, have in two replicas of, in the member cluster one and three replicas in the member cluster two. So uh, this is an uh, um, architecture of the KubeFed. Uh, we have a single cluster host in which we have installed the control plane and uh, we are injected the config file for the member cluster one and for the member cluster two. Under we can see that the, the, there are the definition and object for the federated resource. For example, federated namespace and federated deployment. And the hard row representing the propagation mechanism to create the Kubernetes resource inside the member clusters. So now we have an, an infrastructure that uh, um, allow uh, the, uh, to create the in different Kubernetes cluster, creating in different uh, cloud region, the resources that we want, for example, um, deployment and services. And now we want to try a mechanism that unify the services under the same domain name. And uh, now we ask ourselves, how can we automate the management of the DNS records? And the answer is in the external DNS. It's a tool that makes, uh, makes the Kubernetes resources usable through the DNS provider and it's retrieve a list of the resources present in the member cluster, such as service or ingress, 
and configuring and specific DNS provider. But how this tool can be retrieve these uh, results and uh, this information? Through the, the multi-cluster ingress DNS. It's a tool that implements the mechanism to retrieve in the member cluster the information about on service and ingress. And uh, for information, we intend the IP address of the services. And uh, this mechanism um, ensures to retrieve these resources and information inside a multiple Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this tool is used in federation context and uh, it in, uh, integrates very well with the external DNS. So this is a simple schema of the multi-cluster ingress DNS mechanism. To start the me this mechanism, it's necessary that the user define a single object, the ingress DNS record object. Uh, in which the user defined the name of the resource that he wants to retrieve in the member cluster and the domain for which we uh, want to retrieve the IP address. When this object is uh, defined by the user, on, uh, in aut automatically uh, will be created an ingress DNS controller that have uh, the possibility to retrieve a specific ingress and a specific domain in the member cluster, in the member cluster of the federation. And when this controller retrieves the information configuring the uh, ingress DNS record. Now, uh, when this object is configured, another controller called the DNS endpoint controller can be start and uh, retrieve the information inside the, the ingress DNS record and translate it in another Kubernetes object, the DNS endpoint object. This is important because the external DNS is configured to retrieve the information about the services at ingress inside the um, DNS endpoint object. And when this object is created, the external DNS can be retrieved this information and configuring a specific DNS provider. So uh, this is a schema of an ingress DNS record. It's important that the name of this object is the same name of the resource ingress that we want to retrieve. And in the host field, we uh, define the domain name for which we want to retrieve the IP address of the services. This is a screenshot of the describe command for the ingress DNS record. And in the red section, we can see that we have a single domain in the host. In this case, for example, we have an L word test global guard services IT. And for this domain, we have two set of IP address, one set for one single uh, member cluster in the federation. For example, we have a Fed cluster CT1 and the Fed cluster NA that representing the member cluster in our federation. And uh, the IP address present in this set uh, corresponding to the IP address of the worker node inside the member cluster. Now, this information is translated in the DNS endpoints object. And this is a screenshot of the describe command. And in the red section, we can see that we have the same domain name, but for this domain, we have a single set of the IP address. Now, uh, the external DNS can be retrieved in this information and can uh, configuring the DNS provider. In this, in this example, we have used the power DNS, and uh, this is a screenshot of the dashboard. And you can see that the external DNS for each IP address have created a single DNS record. 
Uh, okay, so this is um, our architecture that we have created for testing the cube effect. You can see that we have a single host cluster, of course, in which we have uh, installed and configuring the control plane, and we have uh, deployed and configuring external DNS to communicate with the, our power DNS. So we have created also two member cluster, and uh, you can see that this member cluster is created inside two different uh, region of the GAR cloud. This because we want to create a um, uh, redundancy and an um, high availability multi-region for the our application and services. So in the future, uh, we ensure and find a redundancy system for the host cluster. Because when the whole host cluster is down, we don't have the possibility to coordinate the federation. But uh, for the KubeFed developers, it's a not problem because it says that when your uh, host cluster is down, uh, the member cluster in your federation will continue to work again. But uh, we want to try and uh, find the mechanism to create a redundancy for the host cluster. And another work is a uh, multi-region storage redundancy uh, for the Kubernetes uh, storage and persistence. Uh, because for the moment we uh, work at only for the application services layer, but we want to uh, try a mechanism to create the same high availability also for the storage layers. This is um, some link about the KubeFed and external DNS documentation. And uh, it's, it's a GitLab uh, repository uh, that uh, we have uh, defined and configuring some file for create and for testing the cube effect. That's all and thanks for your attention and I'm available live uh, to answer your questions. Thanks.